All right, we're going to move on here to the, the last letter, the last practice, which is to share. This, this last S is focused on you sharing the story of what Christ has done in your life. Okay? Now, um, we could do a whole other seminar, right, on specifically uh, knowing how to share the gospel, but I think you can share the gospel in with your own story, right? So, for example, my story is... At the age of five, through family devotions, my mom was sharing about salvation, the need, the need for everyone to confess Christ as Lord, to be forgiven of their sins in order to receive eternal life. And I just remember in that moment, I came under conviction of the Holy Spirit where I sensed I was a sinner and apart from Christ, I was going to go to hell. So even as I'm sharing this story with others, I am sharing with them, this is the gospel, right? All have sinned to fall short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal through eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, right? So I'm kind of going through the Romans road as I'm sharing this. So even as you share your testimony, you can weave in the gospel, right? So uh, we'll probably do other training down the road where we're looking specifically at, you know, what is the basic gospel message? But today is kind of more like a precursor to that, um, because I've discovered in my time here at, at Forks Community Church, like people kind of needed more of the baby steps, all right? And I don't mean that in any offensive way uh, to your intelligence or anything, but for me, I was kind of skipping over a lot of things because for me, this just came natural. Well, of course I'm praying. Well, of course I'm listening. Well, we had to, had to take a step back to kind of cover some of these steps to get you to the place where you could begin conversing with people, Okay. So we're going to uh, look at an example here of a testimony of someone sharing their story about Christ. It's, it's John chapter 9, and it's verses 1 through 15. This is the, the story of, of the healing of the man born blind. I'm going to read this, uh, and then we're going to go through these parts. John 9, verses 1 through 15 as he was passing by, this is Christ, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned this man or his parents that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, Jesus answered. This came about so that God's works might be displayed in him. We must do the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After he said these things, he spit on the ground, made some mud from the saliva, and spread the mud on his eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he left, washed, and came back seeing. His neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit begging? Some said, He's the one. Others were saying, No, but he looks like him. He kept saying, I'm the one. So they asked him, they asked him, then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes and told me, go to Siloam and washed. So when I went and washed, I received my sight. Where is he? They asked. I don't know, he said. We're going to continue on here a little bit. They brought the man who used to be blind to the Pharisees. The day that Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes was a, was a Sabbath. Then the Pharisees asked him again how he received his sight. He put mud on my eyes, he told them. I washed and I can see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he doesn't keep the Sabbath. But others were saying, how can a sinful man perform such signs? And there was a division among them. Again, they asked the blind man, what do you say about him since he opened your eyes? He's a prophet, he said. Okay, I'm going to stop there. So here we kind of, we, we get a very basic um, testimony we get a, of three parts. And the three parts are this. My life before Christ. What was your life like before Christ? This man's um, testimony was very simple. I once was blind, but now I see, right? Prior to Christ, I was blind, but he put, Mud in my eyes, I wash them out, and now I see. 
So what was your life before Christ? By the way, um, you know, with the baptism service coming up, all those individuals getting baptized, we have them write a testimony. And this is basically the outline I give them. What was your life before Christ? How did you meet Christ is the second part. And then my life after Jesus, right? How has knowing Jesus changed your life? Because there should be transformation. Yes, there should be transformation. So there's, um, what was your life like before Christ? How, how did you meet Jesus? And what was your life like after Jesus? And this is where it's helpful to get really specific. I've found that as I have uh, observed many, many testimonies over the year, people just aren't specific. Well, I read the Bible and I became safe. Okay, well, tell me, what did you read in the Bible? What verse? How did God use that verse? You know, was it overnight I read the Bible and became, was it over a period of time? Like, details are important, right? And then how has your life changed after Jesus? In, in our postmodern era, the one thing that people can't argue with you about is your story. It's your story. So this is why sharing our story can be powerful and effective because as we share our story, we can incorporate the gospel just like I did with my testimony. You know, I remember as my mom read the Bible, she shared the essence of Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, right? Because there's power in the word of God, right? It, it's not my testimony in of itself that's powerful, but as I include God's word in my testimony, because it's a double-edged double sword, it's living and active, the Spirit of God can use that word to convict people and help them see their need for Christ. So that's why we, I say we can use our testimony in a powerful way by including the gospel in it and including the truths of God's word in it. And you don't have to, you know, say that it's Romans 3.23. There's not power in chapter, verse, right, reference. It's in the words. It's in the content, right? Does that make sense? Okay. So this is where we might want to actually take some time, if you've never actually written out your testimony, to do that. And I would be happy uh, to read over that. And not that you're going to stand up in front of someone, okay, uh, no, that's terrible. Like, don't do that. Like, this has to flow from your heart, but you, you kind of might want to rehearse it uh, first and so that it's just coming, it's natural, it's coming from your heart, it's rolling off, off your tongue. It, it, it's your story. You don't want to be sitting at Starbucks, right, with your note app open on your phone just to, no, that seems canned, that seems unnatural, that's not relational, okay? All right, any questions about this part? Is anyone feeling overwhelmed with everything I shared? And it's okay if you, you do. Listen, uh, we're not saying, okay, this afternoon go do all five of these. I mean, you could, it could be, right? But the first step is what? Yeah, begin with prayer. And it's, it's the simplest one, but often it's the hardest one to be intentional about. And you can practice listening uh, throughout the day with your spouse, uh, with the neighbor, with my kids. Listen. Uh, parents, we tend to want to correct more than connect. That's an issue for me. <laughs> Pray for me. Um, eating, right? We, we all like to eat. Um, you know, if you're a football fan and, you know, you like watching all the football games on a Sunday afternoon or Monday night, instead of just watching it by yourself, say, hey, who, who could I invite over? Let's Let's get some wings or some, you know, whatever. Let's have uh, veggies and hummus, all right, for you vegetarians. You're like, 
Just, you're including things in your everyday life. And what I like about the bless is we're not saying, hey, add another thing to your life, but here are practices that can be part of a lifestyle in, in your everyday life. And you're looking for opportunities to serve and then share the story, okay? So I have this little bless card with all the practices on it, okay? I'm gonna just pass these out. You can uh, put these up on your fridge, put it, tape it in your car, whatever. You just wanna pass those back. This, just as a reminder, put it in your Bible. So every time you see it, oh yeah, I need to pray. Or who am I, who am I reaching out to? But in the seven minutes we have left, you can write this down or put it in your phone. Think of who are the three to five people that maybe God has put on my heart even now as we've been going through this. Who are, who are the three of the five people that I can begin praying for? My problem is, is it's hard to narrow down the three to five people because through coaching and, and, and my wife being a teacher, like we know so many people in the community and it's really hard to, to narrow it. But who are three to five people in your neighborhood, your workplace, that you can begin praying about? I'm just curious, as we were going through this, were any of you zapped by the spirit to go, oh man, I need to be pre like this person, pff, without a doubt. All right, no one? That's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see it. Yep, yeah. Mm. Yeah, no, and I appreciate your candor because, you know, that, that's where it begins, and, and that can be part of the prayer too. Lord, I changed my heart, yeah. Well, just as an encouragement, I remember when... Um, you had me over at your house for, for lunch. Uh, I think I heard you and Bill share that you, you want to be using hospitality, right? So there you go. There. Yeah. So let me ask this question, and then we'll close. Um, my, my fear of doing this seminar was that, um, okay, we're all here, and you're, you're, you're excited to learn, and we've had a lot of good engagement here this morning, but then what's next? Because the worst thing could happen is like, okay, we well, learned all this stuff, but then, yeah, so how, how can I help you moving forward, like, in terms of not so much accountability, but in encouragement? Well, think about that question, because I, I want to be able to encourage you and help you as, you know, two months from now, so we're not like, oh, yeah, I went to that seminar, but have, haven't done anything with it. So, was this helpful today or not? And you can be completely honest with me if you're like, yeah. Okay, no, that's a good idea. Doesn't need to be two hours, though. Does it need to be two hours? Three. Oh, okay. Yeah, we could do lunch and uh, follow up. Okay, sounds. Well, let, let's pray and I'll let you guys go. Lord, thank you for this time. It was uh, enriching, it was meaningful. I trust that it was helpful. And I pray, God, that each of us would uh, take the tools that we've learned here today, Lord, that we would not just put them on the shelf like a toolbox, but we would implement them in our daily lives and help us just to begin to pray, impress people in our, in our hearts, Lord, that we need to be praying for. And I pray, God, that from this, you would bear fruit for all of eternity. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you for your time. <laughs>